This is the second part of a series entitled The Need for Website Speed. For a full rundown of the article and associated videos, check out the link in this window. Now, I'm going to go ahead and run through several of these Google suggestions. Some of them I'll just be talking about, while others I'm going to go into more detail and show you how to implement. Now, the PageSpeed plugin can be installed on Chrome, Firefox, and I believe IE. Now, in Chrome, you're going to want to right click anywhere on the page, click the Inspect Element button. This brings up the Chrome Developer Tools. And over here on the right hand side, you'll see the PageSpeed tab. You're going to want to click on that and then click the Run Page Speed button. And as what this does is a full analysis on the current page that's loaded and it comes back with several different suggestions that you can perform on this page and they usually associate this with your entire site because most of these if you do it on one page it's going to do it for your entire site but as you apply these suggestions to your site you'll help to increase your page speed score which ultimately helps with your page rank because google ties page speed in with page rank so um, there's several different suggestions as you can see here and we're going to go ahead and dive into each one of them. The first one is combine images into CSS sprites. And as you can recall from the first videos, what this suggestion is saying is saying you have a lot of different images on your site and if you combine them into one image, you'll make a lot fewer requests. Because if we go back and look at the network tab here, we'll see that this site is made up of tons of different files. Each one of these are different style sheet files, different image files, um, all kinds of content make up what this page actually consists of. And the fewer of these requests that we can make overall, the faster we're going to get our page to come back. So they're just saying, hey, you're going to make a lot fewer requests if you combine these into one image. Well, how do you do that? Well, there's several different tools online. Um, a couple years ago, there weren't that many, but um, recently there's been just tons of tools online that will help you generate these sprites. And you probably will need a developer or a designer to do this. If you can't do this yourself, that's fine. You'll just need to convey this information to your developer or the programmer working on your website. And as what they would do is they would come over to a tool like Sprite Me, um, org, and they could grab this uh, bookmarklet, stick it up in their bookmark bar, come back to your website and then they can click this link and is what it will do is it will uh, spring up a window and the great thing about this tool is that it an analyzes a lot of the images on your site so if we hover over each one of these you'll see that there's several different images that are being shown here and is what it's going to do is going to take all of these images and combine them into one image and the one that you want to look for here is what they call vertical varied width and is what this will do is it will try to create the smallest sized um, image based on um, the vertical width of the images that it found. So if we click make sprite is what it's going to do is it's actually going to create one single image and it took all those images put them into one file so now you can see that what used to be 10 or 12 different requests is now combined into one image. Now um, the developer or programmer can take this image and the exported CSS and begin to revamp uh, your site so that fewer requests are made. Now this process does require um, a little bit of work. It's not um, one of the easier processes so um, it may cost a little bit of money if you're hiring out a programmer but if you're doing it yourself it's just going to cost you time. So um, that's probably one of the more complex um, uh, development side tasks that you're going to uh, come across. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one here. The next one is serve uh, serve resources for my consistent URL. And as what this is saying is this is saying, hey, um, there's several different requests for a particular asset on your site, and um, instead of making multiple requests to those. Um, let's try to make one single request and these are usually a tied to affiliate links now you don't really need to worry about this unless you just have a whole ton of these so this particular one you can actually bypass if there's a few but like I said if there's a lot of them then you're gonna want to um, uh, definitely make the effort to make sure that you're not making multiple requests alright so the next section that we're gonna look at here is called inline small CSS but before I dive into this, I just want to go over a specific plugin that I use on my WordPress site that is actually going to take care of many of these suggestions. So I'm just going to go ahead and introduce it now. So let's jump out and open a new tab here and let's browse out to this plugin. 
And what the plugin is called, it's called W3 Total Cash. Many of you might have heard of it if you use WordPress. And it is a fantastic plugin that does um, considerably um, high detailed caching uh, for your WordPress site. And if you look over here on the left hand side, you'll see a lot of these different categories that it covers. And I'm not going to go into detail of all of them. Um, there's total websites written that uh, explain how to do this. It's actually pretty complicated and if you feel like you're overwhelmed with it then you would definitely want to get a programmer or somebody who knows what they're doing to help you with some of these settings. Is What I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of point you in the right direction and show you where that setting would exist in this tool. Now if you're not using a WordPress or you're using some other type of application like ASP.NET or Java Server Pages there's going to be a lot of different tools out there that are similar to this so you would just have to do a search and maybe get on a forum or something and ask um, some other people and I guarantee you they'd be able to point you to very similar tools now you may have to pay for them this particular plugin is free which is great so with that said let's go ahead and jump back to the analysis let's look at this inline small CSS and as we can see it's pointing at several different style sheet files and as what it's saying is it's saying that these style sheets files are pretty small maybe you'd want to combine them let's go ahead and look at one of these so as we look at this particular file we see that it's just a one-liner so why would you want to make a whole entire request to a page for just one line it doesn't really make a lot of sense so is what we'd want to do is combine this with another page request and that's exactly what the W3 cache plugin does if you click over here on minify and you browse down to the CSX section you'll see that it has all kinds of great settings to take care of things like inline CSS and as I said earlier this kind of stuff can be taken care of by a programmer if you wanted them to do that but um, the tools like W3 Cache will take care of that for you so they're definitely things that you want to look at and consider. So moving on to the next suggestion we see there is Optimize Images and if we open this up it's giving us several images that can be compressed even further and a great tool that I like to use is one called Smush It. So if you jump out to smushit.com it's a tool by Yahoo and you can come over here to this uploader link and I'm just gonna go ahead and just upload some simple files here nothing that's currently on my site just to give you guys a quick demonstration of how this works so we'll select some files here and as you can see it runs an analysis on all the files and gives me a total score essentially or um, an overall estimate of what I would save now if you have a huge directory you can start to see that the savings can really add up and if you look at several of these files you'll see that some files compress quite a bit further than others and the great thing about the smush it tool is that it will actually maintain the directory structure and keep everything in a zip and this is a very easy process that pretty much anyone can do you can do this yourself or you can have another developer do this for you so this one is a pretty easy one to tackle, you just go out to smushit.com and smush it. All right, so the next one we're going to look at here is defer parsing of JavaScript. And is what this is essentially saying is it's saying that if you have a site with a lot of JavaScript and it's all placed in the head, then that JavaScript actually has to compile ahead of time and you won't get your images and your HTML to render until that's compiled. This is something you would probably want a developer to look at if it was showing up red for you but if it's in the yellow or the green you're gonna be pretty okay so I really wouldn't get too concerned about that one. Now the next one here leverage browser caching. The best setting for this one here if you're using the uh, W3 cache plugin is to come over here to the browser cache section and it has a whole section here that helps to take all the content that comes down and help force it to be cached onto your local computer because every request that your browser makes most browsers are pretty smart so they continue to make a request and as an image is requested or a CSS file the browser will put that in its memory and reuse that again instead of trying to make another request to the server so like I said most browsers are pretty smart about that but there are some timeouts that do need to be placed and that W3 cache will do that. Now the next one is 
specify a cache validator. And this one can easily be set also with the W3 cache setting. Um, you'll just need to go back to that browser setting. And if we keep moving through here, we're going to see avoid CSS at import. And this one is also back on the W3 cache plugin. This one can be set at the CSS level on the Minify page. Um, enable keep alive will be on the W3 browser setting page, the one that we just looked at. And inline small JavaScript, this is the exact same thing as inline small CSS. And this one can be set on the JavaScript settings of the Minify setting on the W3 page. I don't know if I could say that again. Uh, the next one is Minify JavaScript. Now the minification process, if we jump out to Google's website, we'll show this again. I showed this in the first video, but I'll show it again here. If we look at the source of this page, you'll see how everything is just compacted together. And this is what they call the process of minification. So is what it does is it removes all the white space from a particular page and helps to make the size a lot smaller. So as you can see, we've got Minify on the JavaScript, CSS um, on HTML. Now served scale images, this is just important that your developers or if you're the developer to make sure to add the width and the height to the images um, and also make sure that your images are the size that you say they are. So if it's 100 by 100, then scale that image to be truly 100 by 100. Don't send down a 500 by 500 image and then set the height and width to 100 by 100 because now you're defeating the purpose of, of the real size of the image. And you're sending way more content than is actually being displayed on the browser. So those are just little things that you want to pay attention to. Um, specify image dimensions. This one is um, related to what we were just talking about very close in that same category optimize the order of styles and scripts the rule is is that style sheets always come before scripts remove queries from static resources this one you'd probably want to have a developer look at a lot of proxy servers if they see a query string they won't cache that so you'd want to have your developers make sure that uh, resources that have query strings on them um, make sure that if they don't need the query string then remove it so I can go through a lot more of these. Um, most of these, as we continue to go through them, they won't probably show up on a lot of people's settings. The only one that really stands out to me would be enable compression. And this has to do with what they call gzip compression. Most hosting providers, if you're working with Bluehost, HostGator, GoDaddy, and you just have a hosted shared hosting solution, they automatically do this because they want to keep their bandwidth down. But if you have your own virtual private server or you have your own server that you're hosting, this is something that you're going to need to do on your own. And you can easily jump out to Google and do a search on gzip compression and it's available for all the major web services like Apache and IIS. And is what you're going to want to do is make sure this is enabled because is what this does is it forces all your, all your files to be uh, zipped up and sent um, compressed over the wire which keeps your bandwidth costs down. So this is something that you'll definitely want to pay attention to if you have your own server. So this wraps up the series on Google's page speed. We've covered many of the suggestions that Google gives feedback on and provided several solutions on how you can implement these performance strategies on your own sites. If you get a chance, please connect with us at lifeinthegrid.com. And until next time, take care and have a blessed day.